This portion of the news is brought to you by Shell Ultra Low Sulfur Diesel. Diplomatic Week officially got underway this morning with a church service at Christ Church Cathedral. Officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, along with members of the Diplomatic Corps, is expected to participate in a number of activities. During his sermon, Dean Patrick Adderley applauded the diplomats for the work they do, but also reminded them of the great responsibility they've been bestowed with for the betterment of the Bahamian people. You help with the good ordering of international relationships. It calls for knowledge, commitment, dedication, imagination, creativity, and skill. I encourage those present to be mindful of the important role you play and to exercise a high degree of responsibility and integrity. A snorkeling trip turned deadly for one male visitor from Europe today after he drowned. Police say the 52-year-old victim was with a group of visitors who went snorkeling of Rose Island around noon Sunday when they noticed that the victim appeared to be lifeless in the water. The body of the man was retrieved and CPR was performed. However, the man was not revived. Police investigations are ongoing. An overnight shooting incident has left a man nursing wounds in hospital this morning. Police say they need your help solving this latest incident, which occurred shortly after 1.30 a.m. The man was standing with several others outside a bar located on Malcolm Road East when two men armed with handguns approached them and demanded cash. The victim, along with a group of men, ran off as shots were fired. The other men got away, but police say the victim was shot to the leg by one of the suspects. He was transported to the hospital, where he is detained in stable condition. Investigations are ongoing. The Urban Renewal Commission marched to promote peace in our nation yesterday afternoon. Officials say the march, which ended at Windsor Park with a peace rally, wasn't so much about the numbers but impact. Speakers included Peace Ambassador Dr. Ruby Ann Darling, Youth Leader Carlos Reed, and Mediation Specialist Kashina Marshall. Ruby Ann Darling believes their message was well received by those who participated. And the whole focus of the rally was for us to begin to create a culture of peace among our people. There's too much dispute and rowing and fussing and complaining. And from the crowd that we saw here today and the participation coming from the speakers and the message, the message was carried. And so we are looking forward to more peace rallies. The month of October is recognized as Older Persons Month and officials from the National Older Persons Council say they have one specific plan and that is working to ensure that elderly persons in resident care facilities are safe and have a quality of life. With that in mind, officials plan to train at least 30 workers on how to properly care for their patients. Area Nursing Supervisor at the Geriatrics Hospital, Justina Knowles. Geriatric Hospital, Silence Rehabilitation Center, Public Hospital Authority is leading out in that. What we are doing is we're doing a two-in-one program. So we're taking the persons out of the homes, the caregivers like Unity House, Good Samaritan, Persis Rogers, and we're bringing them into the classroom, teach them about all of the fundamentals of age care, bring them into the hospital, geriatric hospital, for their clinical practices. And at the end of the day, they will be presented with a certificate. We're doing this because the National Council on Older Persons, after visitations of the homes, decided that there must be some subst substantive training. Knowles said the training will begin this coming Monday. It goes into three weeks for some persons and escalates to six weeks for others, for them to be able to train the trainer. We have them going into six weeks. So we're excited about it because we want our older persons to be cared for at a high level of quality and not just to say you are simply doing something for them. The Bahamas Carnival was launched in the capital a few weeks ago. It made its debut in the United States. Chief Executive Officer of the Bahamas National Carnival Commission, Roscoe Dames, fresh from the carnival launched in Atlanta, Georgia, said it yielded a great turnout with travel industry professionals. Dames said that launch officially kicked off the United States Road Tour. 
We had travel agents there, potential sponsors. Delta Airlines was there because they're introducing um, direct flights to Grand Bahama as well as, you know, they have direct flights to Nassau. But they were very excited about the new product that's in the marketplace called Bahamas Junk Canoe Carnival and an opportunity to add another dimension to their sales package for the Bahamas. So we were very excited, um, very um, encouraged by the response uh, and some of the celebrities that came out as well. Dame said the Colors Junkanoo Group gave visitors a feel for the Bahamian Junkanoo experience and rake and scrape. But the carnival experience providing events in Grand Bahama and here in the capital, Dame said security is a paramount concern. We've uh, been working very closely with the Royal Bahamas Police Force and the Commissioner of Police and his team uh, in, in ensuring the security of all participants, whether local or, or foreign, so everyone will feel safe. There's a plan in place. We continue to develop that plan. And security is paramount, not only with the in the Festival Village, but during the street parade and any events that we uh, sanction or plan to have in the carnival season, uh, the, the Royal Bahamas Police Force is 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 on top of providing the necessary security uh, consultation. Uh. That does it for this portion of the news, but don't you move. Sports with Kelsey Johnson is up next.